I'm David Kies. I'm the founder of R for the Rest of Us, and I help evaluators and others learn to use R, the most powerful tool for data analysis and visualization, and it also happens to be free. I want to talk to you in the next few videos about what R is and why you should consider learning it. A lot of people are interested in learning R because it's free. But what I've found since I learned R is that the benefit of it is not just that it's free, it's actually more powerful than other tools you might use. So I hope through these videos, I'll give you a sense of what R is and why it's worth your time to learn it. Let's start by talking about what you need to do to get started working in R. The first thing I wanna talk about is what R is. Because in a lot of ways, people are confused about this. It's not as simple as downloading a piece of software and starting. In fact, to work with R, you typically download two pieces of software. So to download and install R, you visit the CRAN, or Comprehensive R Archive Network, website and download uh, the most recent version of R itself. Now let me actually just show you what R looks like if you're just working with R. It's a command line interface, um, not the most user friendly. Um, you can do things like type two plus two, 10 times three, and you can see it'll return responses to you. Now there are people who work this way, but I really don't recommend it. So let me go ahead and exit this. Um, and again, here's the R console. What I actually recommend is working in R Studio. R Studio, the way to think about it is that R is kind of like the engine that underlies your um, car that makes it run, but R Studio is a dashboard that makes it really simple, uh, or simpler at least, to drive it. Uh, to download and install R Studio, you go to the R Studio website. There are various versions. What you need is the R Studio desktop version, which is free. There are other ones that are paid. R Studio looks like this. Uh, I'm not going to actually flip over into R Studio quite yet because I'll do that in the next few videos. Um, but just to give you a sense, you have code, you have objects, so um, essentially data that you're working with. You have outputs down here. So for example, when you make uh, visualizations, you see them. And then it's actually hidden, but down in the bottom left, you have the console, which is essentially the same thing that we saw when we just opened R. One of the most powerful features of R is that it relies on the idea of packages. There is what's called the base R, so like the core kind of built-in software, but there are also thousands and thousands of packages. So anything you want to do, you can pretty much be guaranteed that there's a package that does that. So another metaphor that I like to use, which um, like the other one comes from the Modern Dive book, is that R is essentially like a new phone. When you get a new phone, there's a lot you can do with it, right? But maybe you need um, an app to do something specific, uh, take specific notes or a uh, better mapping app or whatever it is that you want. Um, in the same way, packages enable you to do specific things. Uh, examples of packages. I really like what's called the Tidyverse, and I highly recommend it for anyone starting out. Um, and it is a actually a collection of packages. So you can see here, for example, the read R package is a package for importing data. The dplyr package is a package uh, for wrangling and, and doing basic analysis. ggplot is for visualization. Um, the, these, this collection of packages all work together, and they're really the most user-friendly way, I think, to get started working in R. Um, there's also packages, um, so the Tidyverse packages are all actually developed by RStudio, the company that makes the free RStudio um, software. There are also packages that are made by individuals. So for example, one that I like to show is called Gender Coder. Um, whereas, you know, the typical way that those of us in evaluation um, have in the past asked about gender is to uh, make it a multiple choice question, um, perhaps to asking uh, what is your gender, male, female, other. And of course, um, you know, we recognize that this isn't ideal and doesn't enable people to identify in the ways that they might want to identify. So the gender coder package seeks to get around this by enabling people to um, put in open-ended 
um, responses to a question about their gender, and then after the fact helps you to recode those into categories. It's an example of um, the kind of open source nature of R, and because it is open source, people can develop any kind of package, including things like this, which is great. So why learn R? It does take some time and energy to learn it. Why is it worth it? I'm gonna present a few reasons. First of all, you can do data analysis super quickly. Um, so for example, say you have some raw data here uh, and you're looking at, uh, you know, you have four uh, variables, gender, education level, marital status, height. Um, if I want to summarize this in a few lines of code, I can take this, so say my data here is called nHanes. This thing here is called the pipe, a uh, fundamental feature of the tidyverse, which I'll talk about more in, in um, the next few lessons. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying let's group by gender. So let's make gen uh, gender into two separate groups. In this case, it's only dichotomous. Um, then let's drop NAs for the height variable. And then let's summarize to get the mean height. And when I do that, I go from this before, this kind of raw data, uh, to a summary, right? And so I can see the average height for females uh, in the US, this is a, a nationally representative data set, is 157 or so inches, and for males about, uh, excuse me, centimeters, for males about 10 centimeters uh, greater than that. And of course, I only had 10 observations here, but um, you can do this if you have you know, 10,000 observations, and it would uh, give you the same summary, which is great. R is also powerful because of high quality data visualization. Uh, it's used by um, journalists around the world. So this is actually several examples of uh, data visualization produced by the BBC in R in the ggplot package. Um, and they have actually open sourced this package to enable you to make visualizations in the style of the BBC, which is great. Um, you can see that it's super wide ranging in terms of what you're able to make. Here's an example of some data visualization that I made. I was for a report here in Oregon looking at key social and economic indicators throughout the state. And you can see I made a wide range of visualizations, some maps, some uh, population pyramids, simple bar graphs, all of it is possible with R. Uh, here is an example of a unique type of graph that I had actually never made before I started working with R. It's called a ridgeline plot. And it's a way to show distribution uh, of a variable. So this is actually looking at uh, applicants and recipients of a scholarship program, and it's looking at their math scores on the SAT. So you can see, for example, in 2014, applicants, so those who applied but did not receive the scholarship, um, the distribution of their math SAT scores looks like um, you know, the highest group is just below 500. For recipients, you can see it skews slightly higher and this type, of, um, this type of visualization is kind of an alternative to your standard histogram. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you can do in R quite easily because there's a package, it's called GG Ridges, um, to make this type of plot. R also makes possible unique reporting possibilities. In addition to traditional static reporting, you can also do interactive reporting. So this is an example of a uh, map that I worked on. Uh, looking at early learning programs, so primarily childcare, daycare, preschool, that type of program across the state of Oregon. So you can see um, those. And then underlying that, I had um, data about, uh, at the census tract level, about uh, demographics and other things uh, throughout the state. Um, and this is the type of visualization that you can do in R. But really, I think the killer feature of R is what's called R Markdown. Um, to explain the benefit of R Markdown, I'd like to kind of walk through a typical workflow um, that I'm sure if you're watching this, you have probably experienced. Say you get some data, you do your analysis in SPSS or SAS or State or whatever software, then um, you spit out the results of that analysis into Excel, you do your visualization in Excel, from there, you, you copy your charts into Word and you write your report. Now, for the most part, this works fine. But what happens, for example, if you get some new data? Say someone emails and, you say, and says, hey, I forgot to uh, add the last two surveys. Here they are. 
Well, then you have to go all the way back uh, and redo your analysis, redo your visualizations, redo your reporting. In R, it's different. In R, you combine text and code, and then when you do what's called knitting, when you export, um, that then becomes converted into, for example, a Word document. And the benefit of this is anytime you have new data, you simply rerun this code, and then it produces, um, for example, updated graphs uh, or other types of analyses. So you can see here, I have an example on the left, you can see what uh, a section of an R Markdown document looks like. You can see it has some text along with some code. And then on the right side is the exported Word version. And that would be uh, what you would actually have where you have that text, which remains as uh, text, but then the code gets converted into graphs. And again, they can be updated at any point. Dana Wanzer, an evaluator in Wisconsin, has written that um, the benefit of R Markdown for her is that she does all of this work up front in preparing kind of like a template in R Markdown. And then every time she does uh, a new survey or collect, you know, has new data, she simply spends 15 minutes or perhaps even less, in my, in my opinion, you can actually spend less. But in any case, just a few minutes generating a report and sending it to a client. So R Markdown um, is something that people, I think, don't think about when they think about starting to learn R, but it's really, in a lot of ways, the, the thing that's most likely to transform your experience of doing research and evaluation if you do, in fact, uh, switch to working in R.